بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله أيها الأحبة وعيدكم مبارك and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He Subhanahu wa Taala blesses us all with many more Eids and that these times are festive occasions and that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be with our families during these times and bless us to be in a better state of Iman the next Eid and the one following that. I wanted to mention something very important regarding our youth because the youth are the future. The youth are the future. And so I wanted to give advice to what we call those youth that are striving. Meaning that they're striving to do better. They're striving to have a better outcome in their lives. They're striving to make changes in their lives to be better believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they recognize that they have dangerous characteristics or they're in a dangerous environment or they have negative around them which is bombarding them. Some of the advice that I can offer to our youth is first that as all believers we need to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan wa shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn. Meaning that we need to seek refuge in our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala from all evil and evil personalities, evil people and pure devils seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from them. Uh, you know, I seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan, the accursed. And stemming from that, Ahabatifillah, is the fact that you need to make lots of dhikr. Now, I know these are advices, they seem so far fetched because. Sometimes you feel that you are so immersed in sin that none of that, that, that it mean, has no meaning for you. But never despair at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why you have to try. You have to make istighfar and have that on your tongue. So that means making dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek a refuge from the shayateen. And general adhkar, general remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is going to help heal your heart to put you in a better situation to hopefully be away from those sins. The next piece of advice, Ahabatifillah, I would say is to learn more. Is to learn more. Again, this perhaps is advice that those who are far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot necessarily relate to. Because you get so far, that's the furthest thing from your mind is listening to an Islamic lecture. Especially if you're on the danger, if you're on the, the, the bridge of, uh, between Iman and Kufr. If you are between Ta'a and Masiya, and you're closer to Masiya. You know, you're, you're, you're in between obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obedience to the shaitan. And you're closer to the shayateen. Because you're doing drugs, because you're dealing drugs, because you're with drug dealers and drug addicts or you are, you know, immersed in zina and, and all the other things that seal your heart and lead you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I know it's difficult, but still, I'm offering advice. Strive to listen to beneficial lectures and those things which are going to help strengthen your iman to help you, to help push you away from sin. The other piece of advice, or the next piece of advice, Ahabatifillah, is... That you have to, and this is what some of the ulama like Imam an and probably prior to him others who expounded on the concept of tawbah in Islam, of repentance, what does it mean, how do you do it. Imam an uh detailed this fairly extensively and you'll find this in Riyadh al-Salihin that he mentions the, the ways to make tawbah, to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are that you are, uh, you have uh, azima, you have determination to 
remo to, to, to remove yourself from the sin, to stop the sin. You also take steps and you cut yourself off from the sin. You cut yourself off from the sin. You stop it. And that you feel sorrow for what you've done. So that means you stopped it and you feel sorrow. And a part of, and part and parcel of that is that you remove yourself from wicked people. So that means those so-called friends of yours who want to travel to places of sin, those so-called friends of yours who encourage you to come kick it and let's get, let's get high, those so-called friends that want to take you to the party and have a little drink, those so-called friends of yours who want to uh, just feed you only things that that destroy your iman and that are go against iman and take you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people you need to make hajr of. You need to uh, divorce yourself from them. That you no longer are in those types of gatherings. And that's your step to show your Lord that you really want good. Because even if you make the toba and you do the other things, but you still keep really close to people of sin, it's inevitable that you're going to fall back into those sins. That you're going to become a part with Ahl al-Shar. And you will cease to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they don't remind you of Allah Azza wa Jal. The next piece of advice, Ahabat Fillah, and this is actually an extension of the last piece of advice, and that is that you surround yourself with good people. So if you don't have scholars that you can be in the company of, or students of knowledge, at least be around good believers who love Allah, wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who will remind you of the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who will help you to be away from that evil and remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us and blesses you, protects us and protects you, and guides our youth to that which is good and straight and guides us. Because this advice is similar, it's not just for the youth, but we see the youth in particular uh, you know, have having those specific and particular needs because they are more bombarded and they have less direction. They need direction. They need guidance. They need goals. So this is another piece of advice I would I, I would uh, uh, I will share, and that is to have a goal. As youth, have goals because bi idni rabbina by the permission of our Lord, you may still have time in your life, although death can take us at any time. And along with that, Ahabat the fact that you have youth on your side, then use that time. Make some goals. You see a big difference when you see youth. I see a lot of even non-Muslim youth that are so focused because their parents raised them. They gave them the advice, uh, the, the admonishments, and they nourished them, and they pointed them in the right direction. So then they are thinking of when it, it comes to these times of being shut down, they are taking additional coursework. They're learning how to code. They are doing things so they're going to be the leaders in these societies in the future. But many of our youth, what are they doing? They're smoking more weed. They're getting drunker. They're dealing more drugs. They're trying to get with more girls. That's, that's what they go. They have no, they're so sh narrow and short-sighted. Now, uh, you know, nearsighted. Or they have, they have nothing in the long term. They don't see beyond the flash and the glitter and the foolishness of this dunya. Because most of that is foolishness. You will eventually outgrow some of those things, we hope. But some people don't. But eventually you mature. Even so many people that become religious, even if non-Muslims, I've known so many people that recently have contacted me that are people that I knew from my, before Islam, 
And now they're, you hear them all only saying, well, God has guided me and God this and God this. They have left, they have matured, they've come to another level. Unfortunately, it's on shirk because they're not on Islam. But the point is, is they matured and they saw something. They matured, they went beyond that stage. You'll find that your friends will leave you. When you get thrown in jail, they'll be, they won't be there. They, there may be one or two who stick by your side, but most of them will be go, will be go, will go, go. How many people, as we know, they snitch. You get locked up. There's several of you. Where are those so-called friends? Well, they're trying to get a better deal so that they will not spend the time in jail and they will turn your name up, tame, turn your name over so that way you are spending, taking it, taking the uh, servant time. So you're, you are paying for their crime and paying for their, their rolling over on you. So my point being a habitif Allah is you have to see, you have to begin to think and see the world in the big, and see the bigger picture. Because if you keep this narrow, foolish, just want to be entertained, short-sighted lifestyle, it only ends in destruction. You'll be left behind. Your own, some of your own peers that had their minds together, that had some sort of basira and insight, for the long term, you'll see that they're, you're begging them for a job one day. You're begging just to be, <laughs> just to have anything because you didn't grow, because you didn't have any vision, because you had a destructive mindset and it was narrow and it was closed. So those are just some pieces of, of advice. And just for the sake of uh, sharing, the reason I'm looking around so much is because I just re I just saw some fresh bear scat, which means bear poop. So we have to keep our eyes <laughs> because we want to make it out of this place and, and, and live to, to do more khair, hopefully, and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alham, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyana Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.